it's been a while. Like, how long has it been? Oh boy, it's been nine months. Okay, uh, yeah, it, that didn't feel like nine months to me. But yeah, it's been a while since I actually made something proper. So I thought I'd come back with something, something simple, you know? Something like my favorite games of all time, which I thought was a, a good one to come back to. But before we start that, I just kind of want to explain the ideas I kind of have for things coming up. So before I just went poof, like bye bye, I was in the middle of making a video about Future Redeemed because it was shortly after that came out that I just disappeared. It was about two months after that. That was my last upload and then I was gone. I had half of the video made. I had everything about the changes like gameplay and stuff made. I didn't talk about the story. So my next video will be, my next main proper video will be talking about Future Redeemed and it's going to come out on April 25th because that's a, a year since it's come out, which is crazy to me. You know, I was just sitting there in bed one day and I was like, holy shit, it's been a while since I actually uploaded something proper. Okay, yes, I know I uploaded like two videos and then I took them down again like straight away after. Just because I didn't feel like they suited the channel. And the, okay, Persona 3 would have suited the channel. But I realized it would have taken me so long to get through the game. I'm still not finished Persona 3 Reload, actually. I'm in January. So I should be near done it. But, yeah. Yeah, no, it's been a whole nine, nine months. Goddamn. Would have had a kid in that amount of time, like. So, yeah. I'm alive. I did do the odd community post on YouTube, but that was about it. So anyway, enough about me yapping about how I've been missing for nine months, and let's actually throw some content out there, instead of me just, you know, yap, yap, yap. So I'm going to be doing a list of my favourite games of all time. The order isn't too strict, except for number one. Number one is my number one. Everything else can be moved a few levels up and down. Alright, let's get right into it. With number 10. Astral Chain is definitely one of the most slept on Switch games. It's well praised, but you don't hear many people actually talking about it. Astral Chain to me is... It was my most unexpected like, I guess that's how I put it. I didn't expect what I actually got. I heard it was really good. I liked Nier Automata. I heard it was kind of similar gameplay wise in terms of it's it's a platinum game so like i got it and um holy shit it was good so basically astral chain is humanities after being attacked by otherworldly beings and they are forced to move onto this arc it's like a man-made island but slowly these other world otherworldly beings called chimeras are getting onto the Ark. So there's an elite task force called Neuron set up who command these things called legions. They're like chimeras that have been tamed using some device it's called a legionis. And you use these uh, legions to fight back against the chimeras. The gameplay is fantastic. I actually did not expect the chain in Astral Chain to be used in combat, but the way it was implemented was so nice. When you're in combat, you can summon your legion, and the the right stick will then move your legion around. And then there's a chain connecting you and the legion, and you can use that to do different things, such as if an enemy is charging at you, you can use it to launch them back. You can wrap, you can move the legion around an enemy to trap it in the chain. I just didn't expect that kind of gameplay and it really surprised me. It was really good and I really want a sequel, but they just haven't touched it since. 
I'm begging for a sequel, please. It would be so good. The story was fantastic. The gameplay was fantastic. I don't know what else to say. It was really good. The graphics were great for a Switch game. I loved the uh, the aesthetic. It was perfect. But yeah, that's my number 10. Now on to number 9. Horizon Zero Dawn was a game I went into completely blind. I'd heard of it before, and I knew the main character's name was Aloy. After that, I couldn't tell you a single thing about the game. But after basically 100% completing it, I was like 97.33. I just wasn't gathering some like shadow weapons, whatever they're called. I wasn't bothered to do that. I'd gotten every everything else. I can tell you, Horizon is probably one of my favorite series of all time now. I haven't even touched Forbidden West. I heard it's pretty good though. And I want to see more. But I have other games I want to play first before Horizon uh, Forbidden West. It was really good and I'm definitely going to be picking up Forbidden West and the game that comes out after. They were incredible. So. Horizon follows this girl, I said, her name's Aloy, and basically the main threat of the game is machines. It's like a, it's in the, set in the future, long in the future, where machines have kind of taken over, and they roam the ground alongside humans and animals. Some machines aren't too deadly, some are. At the start of the game, when you experience the world through Aloy when she was a child machines some machine types will run away from you if you get too close but once you progress the story to where you get to where Aloy is an adult things have changed and now the ones that would previously run away from you are now attacking on sight so something's obviously happening there and then during a ceremony known as the Proving in her tribe that she was outcasted from, they are attacked by a group of assassins. They were after Aloy. So she sets out to get revenge for the Nora, which is the tribe. And then everything happens after that. I'm not going to say much more about the story because it's a fantastic story. If you have a PS4 or PS5 and haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn and really like story games, pick it up. But other than the story, the combat was fun. It heavily relies on bows, which I don't mind. I actually thought it was pretty good. What I liked the most about it though was that if you press down, I think it was down on the right stick, it would send out this scan that would show you the enemy's weak points. So they glow yellow because of this device she has called a focus. And if you aimed for those, you'd deal more damage. And you could also knock off different machine parts. So if they had a big kind of gun on like the top of them, if you kept hitting it or used a special type of arrow, you would knock that machine part off. And for some enemies, they'll even let you pick up this weapon and shoot it back at them. Very fun for Thunder Jaws. And I, how could I even think about forgetting to mention the graphics they're fantastic but the the open world the open world was amazing the way you could find these ruins of a time long gone and you could climb to the top of a tall skyscraper that's been abandoned you get to something called like a vantage point and you'd be able to like see into the past it was really cool and also there are just some great views in the game in general. Like seeing Meridian, probably the big, yeah, the biggest city in the game from a distance. With like the sun hanging low, it looks amazing. And then it's DLC, the, the Frozen Wilds, I think that's what it's called, was also great. And knowing a bit about what happens in Forbidden West, I can see how they actually really hinted towards what would be happening in Forbidden West in the DLC. It's great. So, yeah, Horizon really surprised me. Definitely 
definitely going to be following this series forward in the future. On to number 8. Tears of the Kingdom is the long-awaited sequel to Breath of the Wild. Everyone knows this. I'm sure this isn't a surprise to people that I put this on here. Tears of the Kingdom is basically just Breath of the Wild, but with more. I loved Breath of the Wild. I thought it was a very good game, but it, it did feel like it was empty. And I feel like Tears of the Kingdom really fixed that. Fixed a game that I thought was already really good. And somehow made it better. I remember before Tears of the Kingdom even came out, I was shitting on it. I was like, this is not going to be as good as Breath of the Wild. And it's going to let people down so much. And I am so glad I was wrong. It was great. The new abilities such as Ultra Hand and Fuse. Holy, it changes the game completely. It nearly makes it seem like it's a completely different game to Breath of the Wild. But there was there was a lot more than I was expecting. The Sky Islands, I was kind of disappointed in though. Because the only big one is the starting one. The rest of them are just tiny little things in the air. Which are fine, I guess. But what I didn't expect, at all at all at all at all, was the depths. It's just another map under the ground. It's literally the surface but if it was inverted, so a mountain is now a canyon, and a canyon would be a mountain. Which was genius. It gave me real, uh, what was the one from, uh, Low Rule, Low Rule from A Link Between Worlds. It gave me real Low Rule vibes, I don't know why. But I think that's the best way I could describe it. Breath of the Wild was very lax with its story, to say. But Tears of the Kingdom really really umped it up with the sages, the imprisoning war, adding Ganondorf into the Bre into the Breath of the Wild timeline, wherever Breath of the Wild goes on the timeline. But yet yeah, Tears of the Kingdom made, I think, very needed changes from Breath of the Wild that just made the game a lot more enjoyable and I, I find myself having a lot more replayability in Tears of the Kingdom than I ever did in Breath of the Wild. The only thing is, no Master Mode. I really want a Master Mode. But other than that, it's good. On to number 7. Persona 3 Reload is the only game on this list that I haven't finished, as I said at the start. I think I'm near though. Combat is, you know, your standard Persona combat. You have your different elements or attributes, whatever they're called. I don't actually know. You've got your weaknesses and your resistances and all that jazz. Your fusion, all that shit's there. All I'll say is, I can't tell if I fucking hate Tartarus, or fucking love it. Somet sometimes I'm just like, get me out of here! Or other times I'm like, I wanna go to Tartarus! I'm very confused with it. In Persona 3, the social links, some of them are really funny. Uh, Michael's comes to mind, when I think of that. It was her fault for the divorce. The only... The only answer you can actually give then. The fact that you still go up a rank after this is fucking funny. Yeah, no, it was her fault. She caused the divorce. Fuck her. Not literally though, that will get you in jail. The party members of Persona 3, I really like. It's funny, this is the second game in this list that Alex Lee has a voice acting role in. Kind of strange it happened twice. If you're wondering what his previous one was in this list, it was in Astral Chain. He plays the brother of the main character. Oh, this is my first time playing Persona 3. And 
I've got to say, it was quite it, it's quite good. I'm a bit iffy about uh, the answer coming as a fucking 35 euro DLC. And I paid 70 quid for the fucking game. Unless, where's Femsi? Is Katone just gonna go and fucking die in a hole? Is that, that her fate? She's dead in Tartarus somewhere, just lying on the ground. But yeah, as a first time Persona 3 player, I would say it's really good. Elizabeth is the best, best Velvet Room attendant, and you cannot tell me otherwise. Yeah, that, I just have to state that. She is the best one. Anyway, great game, great combat, great everything as a Persona game usually is. Now, number six. Yeah, that's right, we're done with the, the shitty number six. Oh, well, there it is again. But yeah, on to number six. Nier Automata was another game that surprised me. I knew a good bit about the game going in. I knew they were robots. But other than that, like I knew I knew of 2B, I knew of A2, and I knew they were robots. The rest of the game was a complete shock to me. What I found really interesting was the way you have to play the game multiple times. I just wish I could get rid of Route B and go straight to C. I don't want to play as 9S, bro. I hate the hacking minigame, I'm going to be honest. It's really boring. A2 just plays exactly like 2B. But, uh... She has Rage, or whatever it's called. The world was smaller than I was expecting it to be. But... That doesn't bother me. It was it was still good to explore. I haven't gotten ending E, but I've seen it. I'm just, uh, I, I don't want to do that mini game. I got really far and then I died at the end and I just got really annoyed, so I just left it. But yeah, it's a sad game. Bro, I was fucking broken at the start of, N of Route C. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Whoo, that got me. That got me, bro. That got me. Didn't have to do me like that, but it did. Yeah. Hmm. The fields. The fields were real. And now that I have a play, uh, PS5, I do. I do mean to get around to playing near Replicant. I've heard it's also really, really good. But I have to finish Persona 3 first, and then I have Spider-Man Miles Morales sitting on my PS5 that I bought. I played the first game, then Persona 3 Reload came out. And once I'm done Reload, I'll probably play that. Then maybe. Maybe I'll get around to Replicant, I don't know. But yeah, I really liked... The story went to places I did not expect in the slightest. Which is good, I like me you know, a plot twist, but fucking hell. Probably because I hadn't played a near game before. Yep. A very, very good game. I'd recommend it. You should probably play uh, uh, Replicant first. It's probably how you're supposed to do it. But oh well. Yep. On to number five. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, baby. Now we're getting into my zone. Now we're getting into the real stuff. Top five up, the real stuff. Xenoblade is obviously my favorite series of all time. And... <laughs> of course this was going to be in my top five. It, it, okay, it was barely in the top five. Because Xenoblade 1, while it is a fantastic game, I love it, and I have about 300 hours on it, I've replayed it probably about 8 times, is my least favourite in the Xenoblade series, and I do have some games outside of the Xenoblade series that I do think beat it. The story and the characters are obviously great. The gameplay, while it is my least favourite in the series, is still really good. Like playing as Melia is the most fun thing. Shulk ain't bad either. Dunban's pretty fun to play. Ricky's fun to play. Fiora's fun to play. Just don't play Sharla. Ryan's good too. Ryan has big damage. I like Ryan. But yeah, don't don't play Sharla. No one likes Sharla. Fuck off, Sharla. They just, if they removed her from the game, it would make no difference to the overall plot. I don't need Gato's number one simp in my party. 
Unfortunately, that means Kano in Future Redeemed, not Future Redeemed, Future Connected, is also bad because it's literally a copy of Sharda. But they're better than Sharda because there's no chain attacks in Future Connected, so at least Kino isn't going to be ruining them. I loved the exploration of Xenoblade 1. It definitely has some of my favorite areas in the series. Uh, being like Mac. Machina Machina Wild in the wrong game. Machina Forest. Eretz Sea. And uh, the Fallen Arm. I think those areas are great. Oh, this combat isn't my favorite. It's still really fun, obviously. The yeah. Xenoblade 1 obviously is gonna be up here. Fantastic story. Great animation. Beautiful for a Switch game. I could sing praises about Xenoblade all day. Future Connected was, it was good. It's probably my least played one in the series, but like, it's only 10 hours long. Banger music in it too. You cannot go wrong with Fog Beast Battle and Time to Fight by On a Shoulder. You can't go wrong with those two. They are two of the most certified slaps in the series. So, has that going for it. Yeah. Anyway, now. On to number four. Hollow Knight is a game I haven't really talked about much on this channel. I love Hollow Knight. It is so good. It's the only Metroidvania I can find myself replaying over and over again just the, the visuals the gameplay like I, I i don't know something about hot there's just something about hollow knight and i'm sure loads of people know what i mean but there's just something about it that just makes it so good i remember when i was going to first play it my friend was like dude play hollow knight it's really good and i was like how much is it he's like 15 year old like eh nah He's like, dude, just play it, just play it. I was like, eventually I caved in and I got it. Now I just realized how much I'd been missing out. It was, it was great. It was really hard to learn at first. But now I've beaten uh, Nightmare King Grim and Radiant, so... Yeah, the game's pretty good, and no, I don't have a life before you ask. I've never seen the sun. Just like Hollow Knight. The areas in the game are... Some are very annoying to traverse. Deep nest. But the rest are they're very good. I do like them. Some of them look kind of samey, like Queen's Gardens and Green Path. But others are very distinct then, like the Crystal Mine and the Resting Grounds. The bosses in the game are very good too. Nightmare King Grim being my favorite one in the game. Dung Defender is really random. The Radiance, it was hard the first time I fought her. Now it's just a piece of piss. All you gotta do is build up your soul from the Hollow Knight fight before. And then you can just kind of obliterate her at the start. It's not really that hard. The Path of Pain is one of my favorite things to do when I'm bored. I've beaten it so many times now. Because uh, I feel like I, I still feel like I've scammed Team Cherry and I bought the game twice. You know, like... Now I'm just gonna go wait in the abyss for Silk Song. Yippee! Anyway, on to number three. Persona 5 was the first Persona game I played. I played the Switch version when it came out. Because I didn't have a PlayStation then. But, uh, you know, that's the point. And even with the Switch version, it was a very good game. I was actually really impressed by the Switch port. Like, yeah, it was obviously going to be a bit blurry. But other than that, it was pretty good. It really took me by surprise. Like, it took me 97 hours to complete. Like, god damn! That is a long-ass fucking game. The palaces were very needed. I think they add a lot more variety to the game than what would otherwise be there. Like... I think that's what helps with mementos, that it's broken up by palaces. 
Tartarus is the same thing the whole way up, which can be very mentally draining. I knew a lot about Persona 5 going in, like I knew the general plot, but I didn't expect some things that I didn't know were there, like, a lot of things surprised me. And that royal content at the end was so fucking good. The final boss though was kind of easy. So, yeah, I don't know. Some were fun though. I hated Okumura. Okumura could kill himself, but other than that, and I mean he did die so, oh well, boo hoo, oh no. Other than that, that was the only fight I actually genuinely took me ages to beat. Other than that, Persona 5 was really good, the palaces were great, the music, obviously, is fantastic. I think everyone knows Persona 5 for its soundtrack. Like, it's probably its most iconic part. Along with Joker being in Smash Bros. But other than that, that's what people know Persona 5 for. Number 2. Wow, what a surprise. Xenoblade 3. Oh boy, who expected? There's two Xenoblades I haven't talked about. Okay, there's X as well. But I haven't finished that like enough. I haven't played enough of it to know how I would truly feel about it. But what would you have guessed? The two mainline Xenoblades. What? What? Of course I wasn't going to leave one out if it's my favorite series of all time. So who would have guessed? Number two would have been a Xenoblade. Yeah, so Xenoblade 3 is my number three pick. Number two pick, Jesus, sorry. I'm just thinking about launch day. The night before the game came out, I got one hour of sleep. I was that excited for this game. I got one hour of sleep, and it was actually the most luxurious sleep I've ever had in my life. I felt refreshed. I was ready to fucking go for the next week on that energy. I didn't sleep until about 2 a.m. that same night and I played about 12 hours on launch day. Those 12 hours at launch day are going to be forever implanted in my brain. I love this game. This game is perfect. Absolutely perfect almost. There, I do have a few critiques about it. But mostly perfect. The story and the character. I've, I've probably said this so many times on this channel. The story and the characters. And the music. And most of the open world. Are so good. Mio is a standout. And probably one of my favourite characters in all the gaming. And it's DLC Future Redeemed. Again which I do need to go and talk about properly on this channel which will be the next video i i have to have it out before april 25th or no i want to put it out on april 25th i'll just give a short kind of opinion on it holy shit i did not expect what the fuck happened in future redeemed first of all they brought back fog beast battle which is hella fair hella fair is all i'm gonna say but uh Future Redeemed really caught me by surprise. I did not expect Shulk, Rex, Alvis to just be there. And I did not expect Rex and Pyra's kid, Shulk and Fiora's kid to be fucking party members. Like, huh? 
And then the last one is just Alvis but again. Alvis but, but but less hot. I love the music in Future Redeemed as well. The combat and the the way exploring would kind of be mixed in with your leveling up was amazing. I love Xenoblade 3 in its DLC. That's all I gotta say. I'll probably do another video talking about my opinions on Xenoblade 3 because I did make one after I got 400 hours a few months after the game came out. But, um... A few of my... I, I rewatched the other day. And I was trying to just kind of see what I'd done and how I did my editing before. A few of my opinions on this on the game have changed since. In a good way. In a good way. Except for Capricorn Peak. A lot of my opinions have changed. I think Future Redeemed helped recontextualize a lot of the stuff in the base game. But yeah, now, on to number one. Oh my god, who would have expected this? Number one is the only other Xenoblade game I have not mentioned. Xenoblade 2. Big shocker. Oof. I bet no one saw that one coming. Xenoblade 2, despite being the most flawed game in the Xenoblade series, like, 3 is perfect, 2 is super flawed. Xenoblade 2, in my opinion, is the best one in the series. Xenoblade 2 is peak. Yes, it has extreme flaws. Voice acting, blade system, character designs. I know that. I know that there are those flaws. I literally have a video of things I'd wish would change if they re-released the game. And... Despite those flaws, and in fact, I think those flaws make the good parts of the game stand out even more. The story is... I know I, I know I said this about all the other games, kind of like, their story is fantastic. But Xenoblade 2 will forever... I can nearly recite the entire opening cutscenes dialogue. The open areas in Xenoblade 2 are some of my favorites in the entire series and in any game I've ever played, ever. Gormot is my favorite grass area I've seen in a video game. Tantal is fucking amazing. Really interesting snow area. Banger music. Almost every area has banger music. Raya and the trees. Holy shit, they look good. Swampy tree. What is with Xenoblade and swamp areas being the most beautiful thing you'll ever see? The combat is my favorite in any game ever. The blade combat system is great. The way you can build up elemental combos, and get the elemental orbs, do the chain attacks, pop the orbs, continue the chain attack, and get huge damage is just the most satisfying thing to pull off once you understand how the game's combat works. The, the characters are probably the cast I'm most attached to in any game I've ever played. Rex as a protagonist. Well, yeah, his pants are goofy. He's a good character. I think he is. I actually don't mind his character design. I think the pants suit him. And I wouldn't want his pants to be changed any, uh, any day at all, ever. Please don't. Pyra is there. She's good. Her character design could do with a lot of work, though. 
Mithra, same thing, but she's not just there to me. I love Mithra. Mithra is really cool. And my favorite character in anything ever, Nia. Nia is peak. And no one can tell me otherwise. I think Nia is great. I'm yapping with Single Day 2 for ages, but I'm going to keep going. It's number one and it deserves the extra special treatment. I'm not biased. I still remember my first Xenoblade 2 playthrough and going through lower, the lower Gromati forest, which every time I start a playthrough, I end up spending so long at that starting section in the Gromati forest. You know, the one with the little waterfall. The music always gives me a wave of nostalgia when I hear the lower Gromati forest music. The battle themes in Xenoblade 2 are some of my favorites. The base battle theme. Still move forward. And you will recall her names being some of my favorites. And of course, I can't not talk about Torna. Torna was great. Xenoblade 2 and Torna work so well together as a pair. It really expands on Jin and his character. And I think it ties the whole experience nicely. Torna's combat is a lot is a bit different and very interesting. I think it I think it works. And you can play as blades in Torna, which is which is cool. I love blade charts. I know a lot of people don't like them, but blade charts are fun, except for Vestas and Ursula's. They can go kill themselves. I have enough time yapping about Xenoblade 2 that it's gone on to like seven minutes of me talking about it. I probably got to like cut half of that out in the editing because I don't want the video to be too long. So that's the list of my favorite games of all time. If this video does end up actually getting watched, I probably butchered my, my my viewer count by not uploading for nine months straight. But oh well me, you know, why not drop your top five or ten games in the comments, you know? I'd be interested to see people's lists. See do we have any games in common? Do we have anything different? Maybe you prefer Xenoblade you know, three over two or one over two or you know, once we're civil about it now. Thank you for watching if you did actually make it all the way through this probably shitty video, but eh, you know, I'll get better over time.